Spain stands for Ukraine. It will supply weapons worth more than 1 billion euro. And Russia expects hundreds to be arrested. Putin ordered to purge the Ministry of Defense so as to punish it for failures in Ukraine. Also, we will talk about the touching story, the Taliban and the Kremlin, how international terrorism united the two. Good afternoon to this and more news in today's wrap-up on UATV English with me, Henry King, breaking hard truth in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. Weapons for Ukraine worth 1 billion 129 million euro. This is exactly how much Spain stands for Ukraine. Well, that is an unprecedented amount of Spanish military aid to Ukraine and not just to Ukraine, any other country just as well. President Zelensky who was forced to suspend his last visit to Spain 10 days ago due to the Russian offensive in Kharkiv was granted an audience by the King of Spain, Felipe, and met with the Prime Minister, Pedro Sánchez, with whom a bilateral security agreement was signed. We are sending the Patriot missiles, and we are already preparing to send another batch of Leopard tanks to Ukraine, and above all, the ammunition needed by the troops, the armed forces of Ukraine. In any case, we are going to continue to work with the President and his team to find out how else, with other alternative system, we can guarantee and support the air security in Ukraine. The agreement provides for the supply of an impressively wide range of military aid, ranging from missiles, Patriot, and ending with Leopard tanks, as well as a wide range of military equipment originally produced in Spain. This time, unlike it was the case in the past, most of the means of the military aid will not come from the arsenals of the armed forces of Spain, but will be ordered and manufactured by Spanish industry specifically for Ukraine. A wise decision that both boosts the Spanish economy in particular and helps to improve its European safety in general. In details, 19 Leopard 2A4 main battle tanks will be delivered in addition to those 10 delivered last year. After 10 years of storage, these mighty war machines are being prepared to be sent to Ukraine by latest June 30th, along with those Patriot missiles and a large amount of ammunition. However, the main and most significant parts of the transfer, new weapons of Spanish production, Defense Minister Margarita Robles and her Ukrainian counterpart Rustem Uverov finalized a new aid package during a video conference on May 22nd, which includes a large batch of 155 mm artillery shells, as well as anti-drone systems, tactical vehicles, optical electronic civilians and intelligence equipment, control towers for remotely controlled weapons, airborne motors and portable rocket launchers, among other equipment. Spain is a reliable partner and has supported our defense since the first day of the Russian invasion. Spain did not turn a blind eye to Russia's violation of the UN Charter and fundamental norms of international law. There was no indifference from you when Russian rockets began to destroy our cities, villages and kill our children. Spain did not show weakness when it was necessary to make fundamental political decisions, decisions for the sake of normal coexistence of people and security in Europe. I am grateful to you for the absolutely necessary security assistance for Ukraine, especially for air defense system and missiles for them. And one more thing here. Spain will also expand the program of combat training of Ukrainian soldiers by another 400 recruits. That is a top-up to those 4,000 that have already been trained in the Toledo Training Coordination Center. Well, obviously, Spain is taking its European safety seriously enough to invest largely into it. Let's just calculate what are the losses of the bureaucratic staff of the aggressor's army according to data from the aggressor himself. April 23rd, Deputy Defense Minister Timur Ivanov was arrested for taking a bribe. The man who supervised construction contracts at the Russian Ministry of Defense accused of receiving bribes amounting to more than 1.2 billion rubles. May 13, the head of the main personnel department of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, Lieutenant General Yuri Kuznetsov, was arrested on very unexpected grounds, suspicion of taking bribe during the searches, cash and foreign currency. 100 million rubles was found. Maybe it was Ukrainians who just tossed that. May 23rd morning, head of the main communication directorate of the Russian Armed Forces, Deputy Chief of the General Staff of the Russian Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Vadiv Shamarin, also arrested for also bribery. Oh, come on, very moderate. 36 million rubles, $400,000. Same day, May 23rd afternoon, head of the Department of the Russian Ministry of Defense for State 
orders Vladimir Vertelecki arrested. Oh my God, another bribe. That's time, 70 million rubles, $763,000. May 17, former commander of the 58th Army Major General Ivan Popov, fraud. According to Russian investigators, the general was involved in the theft of more than 1.7 thousand tons of steel products worth 130 million rubles in Zaporizhia region in 2023. And of course, on May 12th, the not very free but fall of Sergei Shoigu from his chair of Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation. In the two weeks following Shoigu's fall, four more high-ranking Russian army generals have already been arrested on criminal charges related to, that's right, corruption. On Thursday evening, the investigative committee announced an undisclosed fifth high-profile officer had been arrested just as well. This could be potentially one of the most largest purges in modern Russian history, and the arrest wave is only gaining the momentum. There will be more as Russian Tsar is pissed off by his mighty Russian army being sabotaged, undermined and plundered by Russian generals instead of bringing him victory. <laughs> Taliban and the Kremlin, friends forever. Director of the Second Asian Department of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Zamir Kabulov, noted that the proposal to stop considering the Taliban for what it is, a terrorist organization, is being actively discussed in the Kremlin. According to him, the Russian diplomatic departments have a positive attitude towards this idea. As for the removal of the status of a terrorist organization from the Taliban movement, this issue is being worked out by the Ministry of Foreign Defense of Russia, the Ministry of Justice of Russia, and other relevant Russian departments. The highest political leadership of the country will make the final decision. Statement of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia. Well, why not? The goals are the same, the destruction of everything civilized and free, the creation of a dictatorship, instead an absolute power by the force of fear and fire. The means are the same. Torture, murder, bombing and burning, mass executions, war crimes and sexual crimes. Even the sources of funding are the same, so why not become brothers in arms already? We must move on, Comrade Putin. The Taliban, Hamas and the North Korean dictators, just for starters, they are already a part of the family, if you will. Why not making friends with the pirates of Somalia? Drug cartels of the world can also be quite useful from time to time when a couple of tons of cocaine are again found in the Russian embassies as a diplomatic cargo. Why not to gather all the scum of the earth and not to invite them to the Kremlin to sign the first ever international agreement of criminals and terrorists united around their Tsar Vladimir Putin? What I like about the whole theory of the absurd is that Neither the Russian Kremlin actors nor the Russian nation understand what roles they are actually playing. While for the madness of the kings, the people will pay who exalted them. And then, trust me on that, 500,000 of dead Russians in Ukraine will seem to the Russian nation as just a trifle compared to the terror that Putin and his new friends are about to pour onto their heads. Now that was it for today, folks. News and updates on Ukraine. Better stay with Ukraine. UAT of English is going to break the hardest of truth in easiest of terms for you. Please like, comment and subscribe. Your opinion and voice matters. It helps Ukrainian voice to be shared and heard globally. Meanwhile, stay safe tuned for more and always with Ukraine. Just see ya.